now we've come to a, uh, a new event for us, but one which we're very excited about, and that is what we call the Global Hero Award. And this is an award that goes to an exceptional person uh, who has made a significant difference and comes from our community here. So uh, once again, I'm going to call on Rick to uh, talk to us a little bit about our recipient, who is uh, a, a, a personal hero of mine, has been somebody I have admired ever since I got into uh, the uh, work of development, and was one of those people when I got, got started, it was like everybody said, well, there's one fellow that you have to meet, and he has been an exceptional, a humble, quiet, dogged, determined, uh, very credible person. So uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Rick and let him introduce our recipient. Okay. And I was just uh, given a, uh, basically a letter that uh, Global Washington uh, uh, worked on and put together to kind of go through Roy's impressive story and his contribution. And it's a couple pages, and forgive me for uh, not pretending I can just say this off the top of my head, but I'll read it to you, and then you get a good sense of why Roy uh, deserves this, this uh, exciting award. Many of you here may know of Roy Prosterman. For over four decades, Roy has been tirelessly devoted to helping the world's poorest people get secure legal rights to land. You may have read about his efforts to help collectivize farms after the breakup of the Soviet Union or his unprecedented access and close advisory relationships to some of the highest level Chinese officials to create reforms that helped millions of Chinese farmers rise from poverty and starvation. Or maybe some of you were his law students at the University of Washington. For anyone who doesn't know him, Roy and the organization he founded right here in Seattle, Landessa, formerly known as the World Development Institute, have partnered with developing country governments in more than 50 countries on reforms that have provided secure land rights to more than 100 million families. Roy's work to end poverty and hunger started during the Vietnam War. At that time, Roy was a successful young attorney fresh from Harvard working at Wall Street for law firm. Deeply concerned about the escalating war as well as land confiscation in Latin America, Roy penned an article called How to Have Revolution Without a Revolution, urging democratic and market-friendly land reform. His article caught the attention of U.S. government officials who were getting increasingly nervous about the escalating conflict in Vietnam and saw the potential of his ideas. Before he knew it, Roy was called to testify before Congress and soon found himself knee-deep in the rice paddy in a rice paddy in the midst of the Vietnam War with helicopters flying overhead and bomb going off all around him as he tested his ideas and drafted land rights reform legislation that provided land ownership to one million farm families. As a result, rice production increased by 30% and Viet Cong recruitment dropped 80%. A New York Times article called Roy's efforts probably the most ambitious and progressive non-communist land reform in the 20th century. Soon Roy's phone was ringing with requests from other governments asking for his assistance with their rural land issues, and he found himself called into the fields of Latin America, the Philippines, Pakistan, and dozens of other countries. By then, Roy had left Wall Street to teach at the UW Law School, where he developed a small following of law students who assisted him in his work, including a law student who worked alongside Roy in the field for more than 25 years, Landessa's president and CEO, Tim Hanstead. Roy and his small team worked out of a one-bedroom apartment in the U District with no real funding. They kept files in the bathtub and used the stovetop as a bookshelf. During all those years, Roy faced tremendous opposition. He was called all sorts of names. The right called him a communist sympathizer. The left accused him of being CIA. He got hate mail and death threats. He often did field work wearing a bulletproof vest borrowed from the UW security office. It was dangerous work. In fact, Roy was the victim of an assassination attempt in El Salvador, an attempt that unfortunately took the life of one of his former law students. He was also chased out of the Philippines by an angry coconut landlord who was waiting in the lobby of Roy's hotel with a machete. Despite all of this, Roy never wavered. Successes in El Salvador and other countries began to show governments that providing land ownership to the poor actually allowed them to pull their poorest citizens out of poverty. Moreover, it promoted economic productivity and helped reduce conflict. And later, the collapse of the Soviet bloc and economic reforms in China made it clear that secure land property rights were key for sparking economic development and social stability. Today, thanks to the support of many of you in this room, Roy and Landessa have partnered with governments to provide secure rights to land and resources for more than 100 million people. But despite all the awards and accolades, Roy has remained ever humble, even after a tour with John Denver for The Hunger Project, one of Roy's greatest fans. In fact, as his old friend Bill Gates Sr. often jokes, his champion, this champion for the world's poor does not even own any property himself. He's lived in the same apartment in the U District for decades and never even owned a car. So please join me to honor Roy Prosterman for his lifetime of achievement on behalf of the world's poor as Global Washington presents him with the first Global Hero 
Award. Roy. Wow, what an invitation. Yeah. Man, oh man. Thank you. I'm, uh, I'm overwhelmed, and uh, I want to make sure that we recognize that this is not just my effort or my award. It's, uh, it's a group effort. Uh, uh, Tim Hanstead, of course, is uh, our CEO at uh, Landessa and has uh, overseen an era of tremendous uh, growth for the organization. We're working simultaneously now in a dozen countries, whereas uh, uh, when Tim first joined the work a quarter century ago, we were working in one country at a time. Uh, I don't know if they're here, but among our more senior staff, uh, Rene Giavarelli, who is director of our new Global Center for Women's Land Rights, uh, and uh, Robert Mitchell, uh, who was uh, the first uh, attorney that we hired when our funding began to increase uh, in the early uh, 1990s. And of course, there's the fundamental work itself. Uh, half the world's population is still rural. 75% uh, of those who live on less than a dollar and a quarter a day live in the countryside. Most of them are landless. Uh, and their whole bunch, uh, the arsenal, the armamentarium of measures that can be used to deal with uh, the problems of landlessness has grown apace. Uh, China, we're seeing uh, uh, now 100 million families, or nearly that number, who uh, have secure 30-year land rights. So the last survey that we did there uh, showed that uh, uh, farmers' long-term investment in their land uh, in 2009 yielded uh, an increased stream of rural incomes uh, of $60 billion, 12% of total rural income in China. Uh, in India, we're now seeing tremendous results from microplots. Uh, I like to say, say that uh, if, if, you, if you love microcredit, and I hope you all love microcredit, uh, then you should also hopefully love micro-ownership. Uh, and we're seeing tremendous results from micro-ownership uh, in India and prospects for dealing with it in such a uh, conflict-threatened place as Pakistan. Uh, and finally, uh, an another new approach of fundamental importance is to make sure that we don't just view the family as a black box with uh, nothing significant inside. Uh, the relative position of the different members of the household with respect to land rights is critically important, and women's land rights are finally taking uh, a front and center position, not only in our work, but in uh, some of the major aid agencies, World Bank, and others around the world. So thank you. Uh, in recognition of, of the problem, not, I hope, thought of in terms of recognizing me, but recognizing the fundamental importance of the land tenure uh, problem around the world. Thanks so much. <laughs>